This guitar is called a Steli. And if it looks strange to you, that's probably because you're more familiar with its grandparent and inspiration, the Telecaster, or the Tele for short. Now, the very idea of the Steli is simply oxymoronic, and that's because its DNA comprises two polar opposite concepts. First, the original Telecaster design is the epitome of low-cost mass production. It's two pieces of wood bolted together with a pickup or two, and that's really it. It was the most affordable solid body guitar of its time, and even today, it remains very affordable in most situations. By contrast, Klein guitars are built by a single luthier, Steve Klein. He's been in high demand for several decades, and Steve only uses the most state-of-the-art high-end parts for his instruments. His innovative design, attention to detail, and skill are worth every penny. But Klein guitars are very expensive and the furthest thing from low-cost mass production. And when you mix a traditional low-cost design with a high-end modern builder, you get a pretty amazing guitar innovation. And honestly, the Steli is perhaps the most unique, quirky, and at times frustrating amalgamation of modern and traditional that I've ever come across, so let's dig in. And to be completely honest, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this guitar. I definitely don't want to sell it, but there are a lot of things that really annoy me. So to keep track of how annoying any of these features are to me personally, we're going to be using my patented annoyance meter to keep track throughout the video. But to fully explain this body, we're going to have to first talk a little bit about Fender guitars, the Telecaster, and my opinions on guitar posture. But just briefly, we won't spend too much time here. So this is a Squire Telecaster and not an original 1950s Telecaster for obvious reasons. But originally, Telecaster guitars didn't have any contouring whatsoever. There was no forearm bevel and there was no belly cut on the back of the instrument. After getting complaints from players, Leo Fender and his team decided that they wanted to make a more contoured, comfortable guitar. And that guitar actually was the Fender Stratocaster. And as you can see, we have a nice forearm bevel and we have a belly cut on the back of the guitar. And so this guitar is much more comfortable when it's placed against the body, both for the body and torso and for the forearm itself. Much more ergonomic than the original Telecaster design. But even though the Stratocaster is more ergonomic than the Telecaster, both guitars and the vast majority of all electric guitar shapes are not great for seated playing for most people. And here's why. Notice that whenever you stand with an electric guitar, the neck is roughly around 45 degrees. And some people like it higher than 45, some people like it lower than 45, but it's definitely not completely parallel to the ground. But when you sit with an electric guitar, the neck is exactly that, parallel to the ground, and it's not around that 45 degree angle. The standard seated position can limit your left hand ability, and it also encourages you to hunch over the instrument, which many players report causes right shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, and sometimes even chronic injuries if you play like this for long enough. And most guitars of today don't address this issue whatsoever. And there are of course different things you can do to address it yourself. For example, you can buy one of these inexpensive tools designed for acoustic guitars, but they work for electric guitars as well. And I'll link this particular model that I like below. You can place this here on your lap, place the electric guitar there, and then we have a nice corrected posture that is a bit more similar to when you're playing standing. Now you can take a standard electric guitar and place it between your legs in the classical position. And this is an improvement over the old school way of playing while seated. That being said, even the position with the guitar in between your legs has a few different issues that we honestly don't have time to get into in this particular video. Now the Klein guitar essentially fixes all of the original Telecaster issues in terms of the lack of contouring on the back and on the front. And it also fixes the neck angle for seated playing. As you can see, the guitar just sits on your body in the perfect playing position, tilted slightly up at roughly 45 degrees. We also have very, very nice contours on the back for your body, which are extremely comfortable. And we have a fairly aggressive forearm contour as well. And this is also very comfortable. And so when this guitar is placed against you, it really does feel like that this should be the way that a seated electric guitar was designed. And if you're someone who occasionally likes to have the most extreme neck angle, like me, you can also grab a footstool, which I'll also link below, and you can use this guitar along with the footstool to make it even more aggressive for like the high fret shredder guys.
by the way, like the video if you find this interesting. Now, I would have liked this rear of the guitar to be cut out even more, more similar to my Abasi Concepts guitar. I would like if the Steli guitar had a cutout that was this aggressive, because when you have the cutout this aggressive, it can sit here perfectly on your right leg in the classical position. But since the cutout is less and it's more of a circle, it doesn't fit here perfectly into your thigh. Of course, we're being very nitpicky here. This is still plenty comfortable and really this guitar was designed to be played on the right leg anyway. Now, if the topic of guitar ergonomics is interesting to you, you don't need to go out and buy a fancy new guitar in order to be more ergonomic in your seated position. And I honestly think it's a shame that most teachers don't address this topic with their younger students. And so I was going to make an entire course dedicated to ergonomics and healthy playing. But then I remembered that this topic is really important for every single guitarist, no matter what their level is. So I decided to put that entire ergonomics course all within my least expensive course you can check out below. So you'll get the ergonomics lessons along with all of the other great guitar lessons and theory lessons and so on. Again, it's linked below if you're interested. There was also a lot of attention to detail in terms of the strap pin location. We have one button over here, and then we have one down here, which is at a very unique spot. But this guitar does fit on your body very well when you're standing as well. And it's just as comfortable, if not even more comfortable than a standard guitar when you're standing. But again, the main feature is for more comfort in the seated position. The body is made from a very lightweight piece of swamp ash. And this particular version has a very, very thin satin. In fact, it gets scuffed and dented very easily, but that's something that I actually enjoy about this instrument. It just feels like a lightweight, really enjoyable guitar to play and it feels nice against your body as well. Now, whenever I talk about guitars, usually I start with the headstock, but there isn't that much interesting to say. But in this case, every single detail of this headstock is actually very unique. Now, if we start with the tuners, we have Hip Shot branded tuners, which are of course great tuners. But these aren't normal Hip Shot tuners, and I believe they were designed specifically for this guitar. First, usually tuners have the gears below the headstock or behind the headstock, and have the posts above or in front of the headstock. In this case, we have the tuners on top of the headstock, and we have the posts below the headstock. Also, usually tuners have the low E string over here closest to the player and the high E string furthest from the player. In this case, the tuners are completely reversed so that the low E string is over here, the high E string is over here and everything else follows as you might assume. And we also have a little interesting metal post for each tuner that makes sure that the string is coming in contact with something other than the wood itself. And even tuning this guitar feels like a very different experience than tuning a standard guitar. Usually when we have tuners, we twist them something like this. In this case, the tuners are here, so we're twisting this way. And we're doing it backwards. So very unique, it's something to get used to, but tuning stability is fantastic, so there definitely aren't any complaints. Now when we go to the headstock itself, you're going to see this very strange shape that in some ways reminds me of a Parker Fly type shape. And it's clear that we're trying to reduce the amount of wood on the headstock to the bare minimum. And to do that, you'll even see that there's a staircase type feature over here. So that again, even the little extra pieces of wood that would be where those steps are is removed, which reduces the overall weight of the instrument. At this point, I should note that Steve Klein's custom guitars are usually headless. And I think a headless design helps keep the balance along with its ergonomic shape. So there is definitely a concern of making the headstock too heavy with this shape. And this lightweight headstock design definitely fixes that issue. There's absolutely no neck dive. And finally, we conclude our headstock talk with the nut. And just like everything else, the nut on this instrument is very unique. In fact, we don't have a traditional nut at all. This guitar features a zero fret and these additional little posts that the strings just sit on top of. Now, when we have a zero fret on a guitar, that's essentially used to make sure that we can always get a consistent action without having to worry about cutting the nut perfectly. But I don't know why we need this particular nut. Nonetheless, it works perfectly fine and there are no complaints there. But again, it's another quirk of this particular guitar. I know a lot of you are going to say that this guitar is ugly and that's fine. I find it beautiful, but tell me what your favorite beautiful, enjoyable telly is if you play tellies. Or if you don't like tellies, tell me why you don't like them. This guitar also has to have the funniest looking gig bag I've ever seen. It's a great gig bag, but it looks hilarious. 
And Mystery Girl, who has a 13-year-old boy sense of humor, said that the case and the guitar looks like, well, you could use your imagination. The neck itself is made out of roasted maple and we have a rosewood fingerboard. But along the entire side of the guitar and also along the headstock itself, we have a very beautiful three-ply design, black, white, black. And we have really beautiful mother of pearl inlays along the side of the guitar as well. Now in terms of neck comfort, this is one of my favorite necks that I've ever tried. It's described as a soft V that gently moves to a C. And that is pretty much exactly what this guitar feels like. Now, if you're someone who doesn't like V-necks, don't worry. I also usually dislike V-necks. But this V is so gentle and it transitions to a C so quickly that you really won't have any of the sharpness of a traditional V-shaped neck if you ever tried one of those. And even on the back of the guitar, there's this beautiful small detail of the volute coming to a very sharp point. And the roasted maple neck itself is very lightweight, hard, and dense. In fact, it feels very much like the Novo guitar that I tried a while back. The neck also has a very light satin finish on the back, which is very comfortable. And I know a lot of people have been waiting for me to talk about this particular guitar. If you want to hear my thoughts on my guitar... And I forgot to also mention that this guitar doesn't sit and stands well. So it is liable to fall over. I don't remember every single neck spec, but I'll make a list right here to include as we start to talk about other features of this particular neck, such as the Evo Gold frets. If you're familiar with guitars of the last 10 or 15 years, stainless steel has become very popular and it's on many of my modern guitars. Stainless steel is essentially the hardest material we use for frets right now and you never have to worry about it wearing out. Nickel frets, which are the more common thing that we use, is a lot softer and they will wear out over time. Evo Gold is somewhere in between nickel and stainless steel in terms of hardness and they feel exactly like you would expect them to feel, if that makes sense. I've heard complaints from many players who don't like stainless steel frets, and they'll say things like, it's too easy to overbrand, it's just too slick, and I totally understand that opinion. If you don't like stainless steel frets, but you also want frets that are going to last much, much longer than nickel, I believe Evo Gold is perhaps the perfect compromise for you. Because they do feel slightly slicker than nickel, but they don't feel nearly as slick as stainless steel. And again, they're much harder. Now there is a debate about whether or not you can actually hear the tonal difference between stainless steel and nickel. And apparently the difference is so slight that you can just fix it with an EQ. I won't enter that debate right now. I'll just say that in my opinion, and when I'm playing this guitar, it does sound more like nickel than stainless steel, if that matters. And one feature that I very much dislike about this guitar is the truss rod placement. If you know anything about the history of Fender guitars, you know that they used to have a truss rod that was at the base of the neck, but you had to remove the actual neck in order to loosen or tighten it. And I believe it was in the 1970s or 80s that they switched the design and started placing the truss rod on the headstock so that you can adjust it much easier without removing the entire neck. And in fact, just about every Fender guitar now, this is a Squire, but you can see it's here as well, we have the truss rod right there at the headstock. For some strange reason, this very modern and fairly expensive guitar has a truss rod that you have to adjust by removing the entire neck. And that is to me very, very frustrating. And here's why. Although we have a roasted maple neck, this is not the most stable guitar that I have personally ever played. In fact, I've had it for less than six months and I had to adjust the truss rod three times, and right now it needs another truss rod adjustment. So the fact that I'm going to have to take off the neck to adjust the truss rod, that to me is a bit frustrating considering the fact that it has so many other modern features, I don't know why that choice was made. Now if you are a player who plays with fairly moderate action or even high action, it isn't probably going to be as big of a deal to you because the tolerances between a playable guitar and a non-playable guitar, if you have high action, well, it's just never going to be the case where the neck warps so much that you won't be able to actually play the guitar. But if you're someone like me and you like to be on the bleeding edge of low action, a slight shift in the neck or in the body is going to potentially ruin that action like we have in this case. So 
When I do adjust this truss rod, I'm going to have to set this guitar up with a bit higher action, which is honestly more standard for a Telecaster anyway. So I don't know, maybe it's not a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to me. So I know a lot of you were waiting for me to review this guitar because I showed it for the first time four months ago. But if you would like to get my initial impressions and all of the extra gear reviews, they're all over on Patreon, along with a ton of extra lessons and the ability to request your own lessons. You can check it out, link below. Oh yeah, and there's some things that I say on Patreon related to gear that I just won't say ever on YouTube. So that's there as well if you're interested. Now this guitar originally came with Seymour Duncan standard Tele style pickups and they were fine. I definitely like them, but I personally prefer noiseless single coil pickups always. And so I switched them with my favorite DiMarzio bridge pickup, which I'll link below. And the neck pickup is also a noiseless DiMarzio pickup. I don't know. I just think a modern guitar should come with noiseless pickups, but comment below if you think that I'm wrong about that. Comment below if you would like a modern guitar, but with full noise pickups. So one quick thing to keep in mind with the tones I'm going to show you is that I have this set up right now like a jazz guitar. <laughs> the action a bit and I have flat wound strings but overall it just sounds like any other type of telly like this and then the bridge humbucker with a bit of gain does that overwound bridge pickup telly thing so that sounds amazing i really really love this bridge pickup and i actually put it in here because i really love the richie cots and signature tele guitar i took that pickup and i put it in this guitar and it sounds equally amazing and then of course both pickups together we got all of the tele funk stuff <laughs> I will say that since these are flat wound strings, it does quack in every position like a telly should, but it quacks a lot less. But again, that's just due to the strings. When I played this guitar with other strings, it quacked plenty. <laughs> Guard is also three ply with black, white, and black, and that matches the binding of the rest of the guitar. Some people call this type of pickguard Oreo style, but everyone knows that when they invented the double stuffed Oreo, the regular cream Oreo became irrelevant. So, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. They should definitely stop making regular Oreos and only make double stuffed or mega stuffed because, yeah, single cream Oreos is just. And then in terms of the bridge, we have fairly standard Tele brass saddles. It is compensated and it does intonate very well. It doesn't intonate perfectly because they're compensated saddles and not individual saddles. I would have liked to see six individual brass saddles, but fine. That's an easy replacement if you want to make that change yourself. But it does compensate good enough and the brass saddles are very Tele-esque. I always forget to mention this. For those of you who don't know, I have a free newsletter with lessons and more gear talk linked below. And I also have a podcast you can check out linked below. So let's talk about the price of this guitar because I think that this guitar is actually a really genius concept when we think about the price point of Tele's. Now, even if you look at the original Tele guitars when they came out in the 1950s and you calculate the price today with the factor of inflation, those guitars will be something like $2,000 today, give or take. I'll put the exact number over here. And $2,000, a little bit more, $2,500, $1,500 is pretty much the range that I think a high-end Tele should be in. And interestingly enough, we have this Steli, which is right around that place. And to me, the Steli guitar is the reason why we need the Telecaster design. Steve Klein builds amazing guitars, but those parts cost so much money, many people don't have the opportunity to purchase a Steve Klein original guitar. But when we take a lot of the same Steve Klein features and we put them in a Tele form factor, all of a sudden we have something that is far more affordable and far more attainable for more people. Still expensive, but 
pretty in line with the original Telecaster price. And although this guitar has a ton of quirks, you know, whenever I pick it up, I always tune it the wrong way by mistake and I have to adjust the trush rod a lot and I have to change the pickups. Although it has all of those quirks, it is still one of my most prized guitars and I love the way it feels and the way it sounds. Now, if the topic of guitar ergonomics is interesting to you, I have an entire ergonomics masterclass, so I'll link that course below as well. By the way, I'm Andre Flood and I'll talk to you soon.